don't know you're making and what to do about that. Exactly. The big one that I think a lot of people don't realize they're making, well, a range from, actually a lot of these are pretty common that people don't realize, but one that is a lot more complicated than I even thought was Social Security. Mm -hmm. Big one that people miss out on huge benefits. I think 90% of people actually don't maximize their full benefits and there's a lot of different rules and a lot of different combinations you can use to file your Social Security. So don't just think, oh, I'll just wait out and see what happens. There's actually a lot of information here that you could be missing out on. Yeah, and, and actually those mistakes you make can accumulate to as much as $150,000 in retirement. And these are all things. We, we talk about you know, how one mistake could uh, actually hurt you, but several can devastate you. So the workshop is going to be next Thursday at our office in Scripps Ranch. starts at 630. Again, that's April 27th. You want to sign up for that workshop, go to our website, smartinvesting2000.com. <coughs> that's smartinvesting2000.com. And a uh, free workshop uh, will be smarter. When you leave. Yeah, a lot of different topics that we're going to talk about that, again, you don't know you're making there. So That's right. That's a lot, right. There's a lot to personal finance that people forget about. You, you know, it's so funny, and I love having conversations with people, uh, and, and that's why I have a lot of clients, I guess, but it, it just when you we talk things through, there's things that we know that we just take for granted that people don't know. And it's like when I talk to somebody about maybe fixing my car. I don't know how to do it, you know, and they go, oh, I didn't know that, you know. Same thing on finance. We do this 24-7 pretty much. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and actually, we eat it, drink it, sleep it, I guess. And, and <laughs> we, we've had so many different combinations of questions and, you know, looked at the numbers. And that's the big thing. It's not just an opinion based off of, well, I think this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. One thing we say that we're very proud of that we do is we always look at the numbers in the situation because one thing, numbers never lie. We love numbers. Yeah. We love numbers. And numbers don't provoke emotion from a lot of people, but they provoke emotion from us because that's what gets us <laughs> excited. excited yeah. It's not that idea that gets us excited. It's like, oh, no, the numbers, numbers. get you excited. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because actually uh, at our office and one of our, our portfolio analysts who's been with us about seven years, she goes, because we call it Monday numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and she goes, couldn't you call the better names? Like, well, no, that's just when you do the numbers. And we do it every single Monday. All the numbers are all the companies. And it's just, that's what we do is the Monday number. And we get very excited about it. So, uh, but we just love those numbers. So let's talk about Verizon numbers because we, we've actually on uh, Facebook, we've actually done probably six to 12 months ago, actually showed some numbers on there uh, that we're not that thrilled on, on them. And I think they're down a little bit from when we talked about them. And when we talk about not being thrilled with the company, it doesn't mean, oh, next week or next month or even you know, next quarter. Uh, they're going to go bankrupt. But we, we, we see these things that develop and actually saw some uh, more bad news today that they reported earnings and, and actually they had a revenue miss, uh, the street estimates, and the shares went low. Did, did you get a chance to look to see what the shares closed at, what happened to them? Yeah, I mean, the, the broader market was up today, but uh, Verizon ended down about 1.1% at $48.41. The 52-week high, $56.95. Actually, getting a little closer to that 52-week low of $46.01. Wow, yeah, and I, I think they're going to fall further. I mean, when I looked through and read a little bit about the report from them, I, uh, their earnings per share was $0.95. Cents. Uh, the estimate was $0.96. Cents. So they missed it by a penny. That's not a big deal when you think about it. But again, because they missed, that's not the good sign. And also, the big thing was revenue was $29.8 billion. That was a bigger miss. About $30.5 billion was expected. So the revenue wasn't there. And uh, actually, just for the Verizon wireless business, uh, that's about $20.9 billion, and that was down 5.1% from a quarter ago. And one thing I've talked about Verizon and why I worry about it is that uh, it's competition. you got T-Mobile. you got AT&T. Competition is not good for business. It's great for consumer, but it hurts the business because they've actually had to lower their prices as what they've actually had to do. And they've, they've lost business, which mm -hmm. has been, of course, hurt that revenue. We saw Verizon reported a net decline of 307,000 retail postpaid connections, or those who are bound by contracts, including 289,000 phone losses. Mm -hmm. So as you said, now they're like, uh-oh, we're losing contracts to T-Mobile, and <laughs> T-Mobile CEO cracks me up. John Ledger always, oh, says, okay. you know, I think refers to AT&T and Verizon as dumb and dumber. Yeah, exactly. And um, says, you know, you know, he's coming in and taking, you know, chunks of business from these guys. And Verizon finally came out and 
offer to unlimited data, mm -hmm. which is not cheap. No, no. Verizon used to be a premium product, but yep. T-Mobile came in and said, we can offer a pretty similar service for a cheaper price. Yeah, that's why my, my girlfriend, Christina, she just switched, I think, about two weeks ago from AT&T because they were ch just charging all these different things. Where'd she go? T-Mobile. And I remember probably about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I'm like, gosh, let's look, let's look at moving to T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. You know, that might be a good decision for the business. And uh, call Verizon, and uh, one of our em uh, employees actually, Carol actually took, yeah. took care of it. And yep. she's like, uh, Verizon said they're going to lower your bill by like $100 a month. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, and it's like, yeah. and I stayed because it made sense. And I, I've been very happy with Verizon. But when I saw, like, well, gee, I can go to T Mobile and be on 100 bucks less, gee, that's 1200 bucks a year. And I was going to do it, and the Verizon said, no, no. Now, they don't want that advertised. I guess we just kind of said that if you call Verizon, they might lower your bill. Uh, but again, they want to keep that business because they don't want to keep losing subscribers because they'd rather have a lower rate than lose you completely uh, is what they're looking at. But our big concern is, I forget, I think the debt wasn't like $55 billion. Huge debt, and uh, I actually went pretty deep into their debt, and a lot of concerning things there with their, their debt to equity, and they've actually acquired some companies, including an acquisition of Yahoo, which does not make much sense yeah. to me. Yeah. But what that means is they took on goodwill from that acquisition, so let's say Yahoo down the road doesn't pan out to be what it was supposed to be. You have to write that down. All of a sudden, Verizon's left with no equity and then they might not meet their debt covenant and be forced into bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that kind of goes into the thought process when understanding the company's balance sheet, and Verizon's is not one of strength. No, it, and actually, and we're, we're very excited because Verizon is, is spending, I think it was billions of dollars over the next four or five years on fiber optic cables from one of the companies that we own that is a very conservative company, but they're gonna make tons of money off it, and I'm pretty sure Verizon has to borrow to do that, so again, deeper into debt to expand what they're doing. And the other <coughs> issue is right now they pay a nice dividend about 4.73%. I don't have the number on me of what their payout ratio is or how much they use of earnings to pay mm -hmm. that out. But if their sales are declining and their costs are increasing to build out this fiber optic network, then they're taking on more debt to pay out that dividend or they're going to have to cut the dividend if they don't have the necessary cash flow, yep. which is going to hurt their stock price even more. Yeah, you, you cut that dividend, that stock's going to fall probably, I'm going to say, at least 10, maybe 15%, because a lot of people own that stock. Well, hey, I'm going to great dividend, so who cares? Yeah, you cut that dividend, people, whoop, I'm out of here. Stock will fall even further. So that's why you never buy a company just for the dividend if you don't understand where the number numbers come from. Long so. story short, be careful with Verizon. There we go. I like it. All <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, 229 here. I can take a break here. You're listening to the uh, Big Biz Show with Brent Chase Wilson filling for Sully on 1700 AM ESPN. Stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs> 